Good afternoon to everyone who is connected in Google Meet uh, or in the YouTube channel. Uh, thanks for participating of this seminar. Uh, this is the last of the year. And today we'll have the pleasure of having a seminar by Dr. Sergio Ariel Paron. Thanks, Sergio, for accepting uh, this invitation. Uh, let me introduce uh, a little bit. Sergio is uh, licenciado in Ciencias Físicas. Uh, it's equivalent to our bachelor and master in, in Brazil. And he also got his PhD in Ciencias Físicas, Astrofísica, in the Universidad de Buenos Aires, in Argentina. And since then, uh, he worked as a CONICET Fellow Researcher. And he got, in 2015, a position of independent researcher in CONICET. And he leads his own research group at the Instituto de Astronomia e Física del Espacio, IAF. Uh, also in Universidad de, uh, de Buenos Aires. His main uh, research lines are, uh, are connected to inter interstellar medium in the galaxy and also in the Magellanic clouds, uh, astrochemistry, molecular clouds, high mass stars, uh, H2 regions, star forming process. And he and his group employ uh, multispectral observations using uh, observations from international uh, uh, observatories and also using public databases and today he's going to present the seminar studying star forming processes at different spatial scales and we ask the public for turning off the microphones and cameras during the presentation and uh, please use the chat for indicating you have a question uh, that will be done at the end of the talk so Sergio whenever you want uh, we can start Thank you. Okay, thank you. Let me, uh, I'm going to share the, the, my screen now. Okay. And now I present. Everything is okay? You, you, yes. Oh, okay. Good. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation and also for the, in the, the invitation to give this talk. It's, it is really a pleasure for me to, to talk with you, to, to be here in, in the Yashe. Uh, so uh, thank you very much. Okay, as you see, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, star formation. Uh, you know the, the stars form in the interstellar medium. Uh, in particular, they form uh, deeply in the molecular clouds. The molecular clouds are uh, huge structures of gas and dust uh, extended along very large scale, uh, I mean uh, parsec scale. So if you uh, think uh, on that, you can see that the fundamental question to respond in the star forming studies is how is it possible that all this matter distributed along parsec scale can concentrate into a small scales to form uh, compact objects such uh, such the stars so uh, you real realize we, we realize that uh, this is um, a multi spatial scale problem and so to to study the star formation in particular in our galaxy we have to, to take into account uh, several uh, processes that occur at the large spatial scales. For instance, the, the dynamics of the molecular clouds, the interactions between the shock fronts and the molecular clouds, uh, the collisions between the clouds, and so on. And also, uh, if uh, uh, to study the star formation, we have to take into account the, the small spatial scale the processes that occur at the small spatial scale, such as the fragmentation of the molecular clouds into, into molecular clamps, molecular cores. We have to study the hot molecular cores. Um, they are uh, very uh, uh, chemically, very rich objects in the galaxy. We have to study the, the accretion processes, sheds, outflows, and, and so on. So uh, why multi-spatial scales? Well, this is because uh, the collapse that leads to the formation of the stars, in particular, the, the formation of the high mass stars, occurs on a hierarchy of different spatial scales. 
For instance, here we have a, a nice uh, a sketch from a recent paper. You can see here a, a, a large molecular cloud, uh, a filament molecular cloud that contains several molecular clamps that in turn, they contain several, several uh, molecular cores in, in where the stars can form and eventually can produce a two regions that will ionize and will photodissociate uh, the, the environment. And here we have a connection between the small spatial scale and the large spatial scales. Okay, uh, regarding the, the processes at the small spatial scale, we have to say that uh, they are quite, quite well understood or, or quite well observed towards the nervy, low mass, young stellar object. Uh, for example, uh, you can see a lot of works of uh, Sean Bali, uh, among many, many other authors, of course, about HH objects, about sheds, about accretion disks, about accretion processes in the nervy young stellar objects. But what about the high mass young stellar objects? Okay, here we have the pro some problems. Uh, they are located at large distances. They are uh, located in, in regions with uh, high absorption. Uh, they are in groups, so we have to live with uh, the, the clustering problem. So the, they are in very confusing regions. So here, to study the, the physical and chemical processes, uh, this is a challenge to, to, to study uh, such processes. And uh, these processes, you know, emit radiation uh, at the whole electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, thus, we have to be multi-wavelength uh, observers to, to study the star formation. In conclusion, we have uh, to, to perform, to, 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 to carry out multi-spatial scales and multi-wavelength studies uh, to, to research the, the, the formation of, of the stars. Well, and what do we want? Uh, a lot of things, probably too, too much things, but basically we want to, to understand what triggers the formation of the stars, I, I mean uh, at the large spatial scale. Um, from an um, observational point of view, we want to collect uh, observational evidence. And we also want to understand this kind of processes, uh, I mean the, the, the local processes in the star formation, this is the, the the processes that occur at uh, the small spatial scales. And again, we want to uh, collect observational evidence. Well, this talk, I'm going to show you some of our works, some works that uh, I did in, in my group in, in Jaffe. Uh, some of them are uh, quite old works. Others are uh, recent works. Uh, I selected them because they show, in, in some sense, a, a connection between the large and the small spatial scales. And, uh, of course, they, they are multi-wavelength uh, studies, pointing to uh, uh, investigate the, the, the processes uh, related to, to the star formation. Okay, I begin with, with this region. This is an extended day two region that writes mainly at uh, 8 micron, this is because the emission of these large molecules that absorbs the, the UV radiation, the ultraviolet radiation from the massive stars, and then re emits uh, at this band. Uh, and this, uh, uh, so the, this emission can trace the, the boundaries of the H2 regions, and in particular at the borders or at the boundaries of this region, we can see uh, several interesting objects. For instance, here we have an ultra-compact H region, I, I mean a, a more recent object uh, with respect to, with this uh, large H region. And also here we have uh, an uh, ego, this is an extended green object that uh, emits mainly at the band of uh, 4.5 microns. This is uh, due to the 
a, a, a line of the excitation of the molecular hydrogen that is likely collisionally excited and very likely due to the star forming uh, processes, very, uh, very likely due to, to the presence of sheds. So at the large spatial scales, uh, we did the, the typical works uh, in these years, uh, characterizing the molecular gas around the, the H region. You can see here in these contours, the molecular emission of this molecule, 13CO, at, at, this, uh, at this line. And you can see an extended molecular cloud with this, with this shape, with this uh, uh, semi-like uh, morphology in coincidence with the borders of the H region, suggesting that the expansion of the H region interacted with the molecular cloud and gave this, this, uh, this shape, this semi-shell shape. And here you can see the same, uh, the same molecule in the, in the emission of the same molecule, and also in the emission of this other molecule, CS, in this line, this molecule traces a uh, denser gas than this other molecule. So you can see here the presence of the of very dense gas and the symbols uh, represent the, the, the location of candidates to be young stellar objects. Uh, you can see that they are mainly located uh, over the molecular gas and likely within the molecular gas, suggesting that the expansion of the H region uh, could have triggered the formation of, of these stars, uh, for instance, through the collect and collapse uh, mechanism. So here we have a, a connection between the, uh, the large scales, the, the large scale, I mean, in the dynamics of the H region, the, the, the extended uh, molecular flow, and the small scales represented by the sites where these uh, stars are born. Okay, but we wanted to see more. We wanted to see in more detail what is going on here in the region where the extended green object lies. So uh, we, we go at now at, I, I, I would say, uh, intermediate spatial scales, and we mapped this this region using this telescope, the Atacama Sub Millimeter Telescope Experiment, ASTE, uh, uh, located in the Atacama Desert in Chile. Uh, we observe several molecular lines and uh, analyzing these, these molecules, analyzing the emission of this, uh, of this molecule in particular, analyzing the emission of the 12CO in this, uh, in this line, we uh, detected blue shifted molecular gas and red shifted molecular gas uh, with these shapes. You can see uh, sometimes so, some types of lobes uh, here um, and also uh, another lobes here. Uh, and this ca can be due to, to the action of the outflows of the, ma the material. So uh, strongly suggesting the presence of molecular outflows, a, a blue shift molecular outflow here, a, a red shift one here, uh, likely produced by, by the, the central source, the extended green object. Uh, you can see that they are a, a little bit misaligned uh, and, and in, 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 in following a slide we, we will see uh, uh, more about that. And the presence of these uh, high mass molecular outflows uh, suggests the presence of a high mass young stellar object in, in the region. Uh, also, uh, analyzing the, the, the emission of this other molecule, HCO, this is a, an, an ion, a formillium, uh, in the, in the 4 3 uh, transition. Uh, here you can see um, a channel maps. Uh, at different velocity ranges. The red cross is the position of the source, the, the position of the extended green object. And analyzing in particular the abundance of this, uh, of, of this molecule, of this ion, uh, we can confirm in an indirect way the presence uh, of uh, an outflow activity. The outflow activity, we know that increases the the abundance of HCO plus and can explain the, the abundance obtained in this case. Okay, but we wanted 
to see more in more detail what is going on and now here at the position exactly at the position of the extended green object uh, you can see this image in a different way because uh, here is in in equatorial projection but it's, it's the same image uh, and here you have the 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 blue shift the molecular outflow and the red shift the molecular outflow and we decide to observe this region using this telescope gemini uh, using the the midi instrument this is in uh, in the north uh, in gemini north in hawaii to observe the the typical broad bands at the near infrared emission the k and h bands uh, in order to to resolve uh, small structures structures of uh, about uh, 1000 astronomical units remember that we are looking uh, a young stellar object located at 8 kiloparsec this is very far uh, okay what uh, we we obtain this uh, this image uh, the, this is the mission in the k band you can see here a point like source uh, a shed like feature uh, seems to emerge from this point like source. Also, you can see a cone shaped nebula. Uh, the shed like feature point toward this, mm, toward this direction. In this direction, we have uh, the, the, the position of the uh, blue sheet molecular outflow. And some are like features that are, seems to be connected with the, uh, with the shed. Okay, so uh, what is the, this kind of, of cone-like nebula? Uh, this kind, the, this, this cone-like nebula could be due to, to a cavity cleared in the circumstellar material by the action of a shed, by the action of, the pre of a processing shed. The, the, the movement of the shed is clearing the material, and then this cavity brights in the near-infrared bands. And uh, this is uh, predicted by uh, uh, theoretical models, for instance, these this models, uh, the, the Smith and Rosen, and the cavity bright in this band because the emission of uh, uh, molecular hydrogen lines that are collisionally and radiatively excited, and also uh, due to the emission of dust that it is heated by the action of the shed and by the, the radiation of the, uh, the central object, by the radiation of the, the young stellar object. Okay, so here we have uh, a, a nice case of uh, a processing shed in a young mass, uh, 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 in a massive young stellar uh, object. Well, concluding uh, this this work, uh, this is the the, the trip. What uh, we did, we began from here, from uh, an extended uh, region in, in which we analyzed the the molecular cloud, and we uh, established some type of connection between this uh, HU region, this extended HU region with uh, this uh, extended molecular cloud and we observed that uh, within this molecular cloud there are several young stellar objects such uh, this one this is the, the ego and then we observe this ego uh, the the regions of this this ego in in the molecular lines emission obtaining the, the the molecular outflows that they are a little bit misaligned and then ob observing this uh, this region we obtain uh, the image uh, of the circumstellar material of the star forming objects and uh, we uh, detected uh, an, a processing shed that can explain uh, the misaligned molecular outflows Okay, we change the, the region, we, we go uh, uh, to another region. Uh, here you can see a, a, a large field, uh, and now this is a mid-infrared emission from the WISE. Uh, you can see a, a lot of interesting sources here. For instance, these uh, filaments, these green filaments are due to a supernova remnant. Uh, this is a, a thin W4. Yes, uh, here we have uh, several uh, H2 
uh, complex. And here we have the source that we focus on, uh, uh, on, on, this, on this region. This is, a, as you see, a quite a, a isolated source. This is located uh, at the distance uh, more or less quite close at one kiloparsec. And we focus on this source because it presents interesting near infrared features as observed uh, from public data from the UKIDS survey. So uh, we decide uh, again to, to observe this, this region using ASTE in particular, analyzing the, the 12 uh, CO uh, emission. We uh, obtain, uh, again, reshifted molecular gas. We observe uh, reshifted molecular gas and blue shifted molecular gas. And uh, here you can see this lobe representing a, a, a red uh, molecular outflow pointing to this direction. Here we have a blue shifted molecular outflow pointing to this direction. They are completely misaligned in this case. And uh, the, here is the... the at the middle is the, the position of the object is located uh, within a large molecular cloud that here is uh, represented by the emission of the 13 CO. Okay, but uh, analyzing the, the position where the, the young stellar object uh, is located uh, from the emission of the, the, the infrared data, we estimate a mass for the clamp in which the, this source is embedded of about 40 solar masses. And, uh, and by analyzing the central velocities of this clamp, the large molecular uh, cloud, the, the velocity represented by the, 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 the outflows, uh, we can suggest that probably the young stellar object is located at the background of the densest part of the clamp and those the blue shifted outflow is probably deflected by the interaction with this dense gas. Of course, we cannot discard other al alternatives, uh, such as uh, the, the, the presence of uh, monopolar outflows where the respective counter lobes uh, are not seen, but um, they, they are some possibilities trying to, to explain this misalignment molecular outflow. Okay, but again, we wanted to see more. We wanted to see in more detail. Uh, so again, using Gemini, the NIRI instrument, in this case, we observe not only the, the broad bands, the typical near infrared broad bands, but also uh, the, some narrow bands, uh, some uh, atomic lines and molecular lines, you can see uh, here. And uh, in this case, we obtained this very nice image. Uh, this is a three-color image in the in broadbands. And again, you can see a cone-shaped nebula. A shape-like feature seems to emerge from a point-like source. Some are light features and also some bow shocks features. Uh, again, suggesting the presence of a precessing shape. Uh, with the, the lines, the emission of the molecular lines, in particular the emission of the uh, molecular hydrogen, this is an image with the continuum subtracted. You can see here several uh, nodes and several filaments that they are uh, within the molecular lobes, within the, the lobes that represent the molecular outflows. Uh, these filaments are due to shocked gas, so we are confirming the presence of the, the molecular outflows. Uh, but here uh, we have a, a, a big problem uh, yes. because by relating the large and the small spatial scales, we have uh, a big problem and unresolved problem. The shed direction traces by the near infrared emission, you can see that does not agree with the direction of any molecular outflow. So this is uh, this was something uh, open in, in, in our work. Uh, maybe um, it, 
maybe uh, we, we need to, to observe uh, the, the molecular outflow with a higher angular resolution in order to, to resolve uh, another uh, another outflows in, in, in the regions and probably uh, from uh, another sources uh, in, in the region, another uh, young stellar object that are forming in, in this region. Okay, but uh, from the uh, uh, analyzing the shed, the, the, the features that the, the, the shed uh, leave, left in the, in the region and assuming that we are observing a processing shed by comparing with the previous data, with the uh, data from the, the OKID survey, we uh, can uh, uh, roughly estimate a, a period for the precession, a, a period for the, the, the shed, the, the precession movement, in about 150 years. By comparing some, some features in, in both emissions, we uh, uh, estimated this, this period. And uh, comparing this, uh, this precession period with the, with the outflow expansion time, following this, the, this work of this, these authors, uh, this, this work is this, a uh, numerical work, uh, we uh, conclude that we are observing an slowly precessing shed and uh, the, this author point out that the slowly processing shed can produce the, the, these helical flows that we uh, are observing in the near infrared uh, emissions. And the remaining question is um, why the precession? Uh, and also a, a question uh, if, is, if it is a common phenomenon in the high mass young stellar objects, because here we have two cases, there are other cases in the, in the literature, and um, possible explanation could be uh, anisotropic events in the, in the accretion, anisotropic events that produce a, a, a movement in the, in the accretion, they produce a, a movement in, in the whole system, and also, um, maybe more probably, the gravitational interaction with uh, with companions, you know, the the, the massive stars uh, form um, in in groups, in binary and multiple systems. So the, the gravitational interactions are uh, uh, you can expect the, the the interaction, this this kind of interaction that can alter the the the, the disk and this movement can alter the the dynamics of the sheds, producing this. Uh, kind of precession, and in some cases, this the, the precession of the of the sheds can can explain the presence of misaligned outflows. Okay, I I go to to another region. This is a, a high mass star forming complex located at uh, six kiloparsec. Here you can see in this in this night. Uh, uh, image the, the emission at a microns uh, due to the to the emission of the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Uh, in this case, the the green is the emission at 24 microns. Uh, this is due to to the warm dust emission, the, the dust that it is heated by the action of the star by the radiation of the stars. And in blue, you can see uh, the radio continuum emission at 20 centimeters. This is due to the to the emission of ionized gas, ion, uh, the gas that it is uh, ionized by the by the radiation of the massive stars. And firstly, uh, in this region, we analyze this abundance ratio, the, the ratio between the 13 CO and the C18O, because because this ratio is sensitive to the photodissociation. Uh, in order to, to study the interplay between the UV radiation and the molecular gas, which uh, has um, a relation with the fragmentation of the, of the large molecular clouds, uh, and, and also with the, the star-forming processes. 
Okay, uh, analyzing the, the emission of the molecular gas on the 12 CO, 13 CO, C18 O in this in this line, you can see here the distribution of the molecular gas, the morphology of the of different uh, fragments of the molecular cloth. We estimated the, um, the column densities of this species, and then we estimated a, a, an abundance ratio. Uh, between uh, the 13 and uh, the 13 CO and the C18 O. And the analysis of the distribution of this ratio with respect to, uh, with the ratio of the uh, ionized gas uh, and respect with the ratio uh, of the dark clothes uh, allows us to suggest in which region the radiation is studied in, in dense components and in which regions. Uh, the radiation can escape and selectively photodissociate the, the, this species, the C18O. And this probably maps the degree of fire ultraviolet irradiation in the different molecular com uh, components of the, of the molecular cloud. But okay, then we focus here on this region, in particular in this. Uh, uh, in this object, in this uh, green dot, uh, is a massive young stellar object, and we decide to, to perform a, a very complete study using uh, many data. Data from this telescope, this is the James Clark Maxwell Telescope, uh, located in, in Hawaii. Also, observation using ASTE, again, observation using Gemini, and uh, using also the data from, from ALMA, uh, molecular lines, and, and the, the mission in the continuum. Okay, at the uh, large spatial scale or intermediate spatial scale, the, the scale of the cloud and the CLAM, uh, analyzing the data from this, this telescope, we obtain uh, this molecular cloud. Here you can see a molecular CLAM, the, the source is represented by this these contours, these green uh, contours, you can see that the source is located almost at the, the, the densest part of the molecular cloud. And um, this is the mission in uh, C18O. Uh, dense, the dense, it represents dense molecular gas. And analyzing the, the mission of the 12 CO in order to, to to look for molecular outflows, we uh, detect the redshifted molecular gas. Uh, this is here in, 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 in the red contours. Uh, we found a, a redshift molecular outflow, but we didn't find any blue shifted molecular uh, outflow. So here we, we ask it if uh, we, we had a, a monopolar case of molecular outflows. Okay, using the ASTE observation in several molecules, uh, for instance, uh, HCO+, HCN, HNC, and these other molecules, C2H, uh, we uh, analyze some conditions of the, of the gas at the clamp scales, uh, for instance, analyzing the, the velocity width of the, these lines. Uh, we we saw that this is compatible with uh, a high mass protostellar objects and analyzing the ratio between the, the, integra the integrated um, emission of, this, of these lines, we estimate a, a temperature for, for the clam uh, of about 23 Kelvin. This is a typical temperature for the, for the clams in which uh, young stellar objects are embedded. And uh, then we... Uh, we went to the uh, small spatial scale, and I mean to the to the core scales again using the Gemini telescope, the MIRI. Uh, in this case, uh, we obtain this this image. Uh, this is the the broad bands, the typical broad bands at the near infrared emission. You can see here a different morphology uh, comparing with the previous one. Uh, you can see here a, a northern near infrared nebulosity uh, extended and composed by several branches. Uh, here you can see a southern near infrared a nebulosity, sharper than the, the northern one. And in here in the middle, you can see a, a dark lane, uh, probably due to the presence of a accretion disk or 
uh, a, a large toroid of material uh, where the, 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 the central object is, is embedded. And this is the reason why we don't see a, a central source, a point-like source at the center. Uh, here is almost the, the same, but in the in the lines, in the near infrared lines, here with the continuous subtracted. Uh, here you have iron two. The the origin of the iron two can be due to the to knots and shot fronts along the regions where the the shed propagates. Uh, almost the the same in the case of the. Uh, molecular hydrogen uh, emission, and you can see almost the, the, the same morphology. And uh, if, uh, in also in the in the core scales, but in this case using the the ALMA data, uh, we obtain this map here. You can see in in gray in in red. Uh, uh, red are the um, uh, contours of the near infrared emission of the previous slide. And uh, in gray, you can see the continuous emission at uh, 1.3 millimeters, essentially the, the emission of the, of the dust. And here we have a bulk of the emission at the middle, uh, just in the position of the, of the dark lane uh, observed in the near infrared bands. And uh, here uh, I am presenting the, the emission of this molecule the methyl formate, this is a complex molecule, uh, confirming that we are observing a, a hot molecular core. Remember, the hot molecular cores are uh, chemically very rich objects. And uh, the, this kind of molecules, this kind of complex organic molecules, are usually detected in this, in this core. And here, uh, the emission of this molecule is presented in, in, ch in channel maps at, dif uh, at different velocities. Uh, you can see uh, el several filaments, nodes, but they are mainly located to towards the south, in coincidence with the uh, southern near infrared nebulosity. Uh, here is almost the, the, the same uh, in a three color image in red you are uh, you are seeing the, the emission at the near infrared bands in the k band uh, in green is the emission of this molecule the methyl formate and here in blue with uh, black contours is the emission of the methyl cyanide another complex molecule detected in in this region you can see uh, also uh, uh, the, this kind, the, this source that it is a little bit elongated in the direction of the dark lane, and taking into account that this uh, this molecule can trace uh, toroids or accretion disk. Uh, okay, we are in, in some sense confirming the presence of a, of a toroid uh, of material uh, from which the this this young stellar object uh, is uh, is forming and uh, also from the emission of this molecule uh, using a rotational diagram we estimate uh, a temperature of about 80 kelvin the typical temperature for the hot molecular cores and from the velocity width we estimate a virial mass of about uh, 70 uh, solar masses and from the uh, continuum emission at the 1.3 millimeters, the, I mean the, the dust emission, uh, we obtained uh, the, the mass of the gas in the region uh, of about 10 solar masses. So uh, here we have a case with a, vi a virial mass larger than a gas mass, which uh, indicate that this core is not in the dynam dynam dynamical equilibrium, sorry, uh, owing to complicated kinematics, for, for instance, rotating structures such as uh, toroids and disks, among, uh, of course, other dynamical processes. Well, uh, so here, by relating the, the, uh, the spatial scales, we can probably explain the absence of a blue molecular outflow, because at the core scales, you can see that the the, the emission of this molecule, uh, tracing the, the, the presence of very, very 
uh, dense gas is located mainly towards the, the south of the, the near infrared emission in coincident with the, the southern near infrared nebulosity, which presents a, a, a sharper structure than in the northern case. Uh, this suggests that the, the, the sheds in this, in this region is, are encountering a, a dense, a very dense region, while toward the north they can uh, flow more freely and uh, generating this, this uh, more extended feature and probably pushing more diffuse gas in the region and generating the uh, redshift molecular outflow. Okay, uh, just to, to finish in, uh, I, I, I would like to, to finish with uh, a, a general conclusion because uh, I have not uh, any strong conclusion. As I told you at the beginning, we, we want to, to collect observational evidence of different processes related to, to the star formation. So um, uh, I would like to, to finish with this question. The, this question that I presented at the beginning is responded with these particular words? Of course not, but uh, I, I would like to remark, to point out that these kind of words are uh, very necessary uh, because uh, besides or, or in addition to the large uh, works, uh, uh, the large statistical studies or the large observing programs, it is necessary to investigate individual objects, individual regions, and to extract particular information. With this information, we uh, can contribute to, to uh, the construction of the comprehensive understanding of the star formation along the different spatial scales. And just, uh, just a, a last comment, because we have a, a common future in the use of, of this instrument of, of SHAMA. Uh, this is a, a radio telescope, a zoom millimeter telescope that uh, finally, I think that, that now we have a concrete horizon in, in, in our future. I mean, from the Argentinian side, I mean, from the Argentinian authorities. Uh, I think that this, will be a very, very good instrument to carry out, for instance, these kind of works, uh, of course, uh, among many, many other type of works, among many other uh, research lines, of course, but regarding to this kind of works with Shama, this is, uh, this is Apex, that is very similar uh, to, to Shama. With Shama, we can study the, the large spatial scales, the intermediate spatial scale, and we can relate with other instruments that can study the small spatial scale. So here we have an interrelation, interrelation uh, between, uh, um, among other kinds of instruments in order to study the multi-spatial scale astronomy, and also uh, we, we have to take into account that SHAMA can interrelate to, to, with other type of instruments uh, in order to, to perform the multi wavelength astronomy. And so uh, I, I would like to conclude uh, with, with this uh, uh, sentence that SHAMA is not only for the radio astronomical use, but also for the whole astronomical and astrophysical community. We have to talk with, uh, with everybody to try to, to that uh, different people involved in, in SHAMA because uh, as uh, I, I, I am trying to show you, uh, with SHAMA you can interact with uh, different research lines and uh, so I, I am convinced that SHAMA will be, will put our countries in, in a very good place in the investigation of the of the space and, and the universe. So uh, I am happy with this uh, relaunch, with this re restart of, of the project from the Argentinian side, and I, I hope that we can uh, use this instrument in, in the near future. So uh, that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for the very clear and interesting talk. Now we open for questions. We have already a first question from 
Elizabeth, Elizabeth, please uh, go ahead. Hello, Sergio. First Hello. Of all, thanks a lot for the very interesting. Okay, talk. thank you. And um, I have a question regarding the, the source that you not the I, last but one, right? No, I, I'm sorry. I, I can't. I can't hear you. I, I have a question regarding the source that you described, not the last one, but the previous one. Uh, okay. Yes, I know. Yeah. The testing one. Uh, yes. This 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 one source. Exactly. Okay. In, what caught my attention in okay the processing scheme seems to be the scenario seems to be uh, quite obvious from at least from the, the image uh, but I, I have a question with regard to this uh, point in the outflow this region that is very bright it's already in the out, outflow region um, do you know uh, can, can you be sure that this bright region is a contribution from the outflow itself that you know an internal shock due to the precession or it can be an object the, the collision with an object like a cloud okay in the way through the outflow uh, have you guys modeled this processing jet in more detail in order to be sure that that um, region is an internal knot or an internal shock rather than uh, a collision with an external okay yes i i, I understand but uh, I, I really i don't know you, you you mean the these features the 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 the, the local features or or the the extended features no, no, i don't no. understand the, this exactly, point exactly the feature that you pointed out the one in the outflow the brightest one but the source go back to the to the other yes this one yeah yes this one that the arrow the arrow in your presentation is saying i don't oh no no my arrow is, uh, i i can i can listen you uh it's, it's very very slow your your voice i can sorry okay the, uh, uh, yeah the the brightest component of the yes. outflow yes this one this yes one, it yeah. looks like it's so bright, of course, it can be uh, uh, an internal shock of the processing jet that is okay. pointing towards us. Okay. And then it's very bright, but it could be also the encounter with a, with a yeah. cloud. I understand. Yes, yes. Maybe it's, it's a possibility I, I, I didn't see in, the, in, in that moment. Uh, but yes, it's, it's a possible that the, the shed is, is in, encountering a, a, a very dense, uh, a very dense clamp. You, uh, as, as you, as you, you are saying. But yes, I don't know. I, the, the, the answer is I don't know. I understand your point, and uh, it could be yes, yes, of course. Yeah, this, this, of course, this kinematics can 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 clarify this as well. Right? Yeah. The, yes uh, detailed yes. study of the kinematics can, can, yes. and i have a can, can i make another question i have another question a more general one yes because of course. we know we know it we know quite well how often there are molecular outflows or even atomic outflows associated to low mass star forming uh, uh, sources right yeah but uh, how frequent are these molecular outflows in high mass star star forming objects? Okay, yes, uh, it's, it's a good question because the, the the molecular outflows are, as you as you said, are observed uh, mainly toward the, the low mass young stellar objects, and uh, I think that uh, if you look to to a, a high mass a young star, stellar object and you can uh, observe the, the object in, in, in a clear way. Uh, remember that uh, you are looking uh, towards regions with uh, very confusing regions. And uh, I think that uh, in, in every massive young stellar object, you, you must detect uh, molecular outflows. Uh, I, here, I, I am presenting uh, 
uh, several cases of uh, high mass uh, molecular outflows and in the literature there are uh, a lot. Uh, I think that the, the problem is the, 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 the regions that are very confusing and it's very difficult to, to establish uh, the, what outflows correspond to, to what source. But uh, I think that uh, um, the, the process of outflows is, uh, is present in the high mass uh, young stellar object. Right, so it, it, it is really frequent because, you know, in the yeah. past... Yes, uh, yes, yes. Because of the past evolution mm. of these systems, uh, there would not be time enough for... Yes, this is because... Uh, I'm sorry, the, I think that the, this was because uh, limitations in the observation. Yeah, of course, the, there was this bias from observations. And uh, uh, another quick question. You said yeah. that this, ob this object, for instance, has 40 solar masses, right? Uh, uh, is the 40, no, no, I'm sorry. 40 solar masses are the, the, the clamp in which the, the, the object is embedded. The ah, clamp, okay. the molecular clamp, not the source. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. So it, it, you, you cannot uh, determine for sure if no, this For sure, no, no, no. A binary yeah. companion or uh, something like that. The source, uh, no, you, you can you can use an, um, an spectral energy distribution from the, the emission uh, of the source in the infrared, but for sure the, the mass you can't uh, estimate, no, no. Right, okay, thanks. Sorry no. for so many questions. No, no, it's no problem. Perfect. Now I have a question from Felipe. I, I don't know if it's Jacques or also. Okay, no problem. Philippe or me? Well, for me, it is just a, a comment. A, a, a congratulations for this very nice seminar. You, you have uh, shown different kind of objects, but the, the same physics. Very, very nice. Okay. And Thank you. I, I see that you are well prepared for, for using the Yama radio telescope and I am happy with this and I hope that you will do joint work in, in future with, uh, with that instrument. Yes, sure. So just this comment. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Jacques. I knew that Jacques would comment on this. That's why I didn't comment anything about Yama. <laughs> Anyways. No, no, please, Felipe Navarrete, go ahead. I will open my cam camera so we can see each other. It's a bit better than talking. So first, uh, I would like to thank you for this amazing talk. It's very impressive, uh, the, the plots and the results you got in this field. Uh, I'm saying that because I work in this field and it, I totally agree with you uh, that every single object is a unique object and you have to study from large scale to inner scale so we can understand everything what's going on and i have one question you show very very interesting results on the outflows but are you also looking to the inner uh circumstellar region of the sources i mean are you looking for the discs as well yeah yeah, uh, um, the circumstellar regions of the sources. Uh, you, you mean uh, from uh, molecular emission? Yeah, or also any signature where you could uh, trace I, the rotation of the jets or something, the, the rotation of the disks and measure the, no, the dynamic. No, uh, no uh, we need uh, more resolution. We need a mm -hmm. higher resolution. Uh, remember that these objects, uh, not uh, in particular this one, but the, the, the others, are uh, very far, uh, eight kiloparsecs, uh, one of them, and the other six kiloparsecs. Um, so it's it's very difficult to, to resolve the, the, the circumstellar uh, uh, material. Uh, I don't know if with um, with ALMA in the, in the better configuration uh, you can resolve this uh, uh, the 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 in the material in in this uh, in this region I, I I don't know but in in these cases uh, it's impossible to say 
uh, something about the, the circumstellar material and, and the disk. We we can uh, suspect the for for instance in in the in the last uh, source we can suspect the the presence of uh, uh, an accretion disk or a, a large toroid. But I think it's more probably a, a large toroid uh, because of the, the the absorption of the infrared but uh, it's impossible at this distance with these resolutions uh, to to obtain some information about the circumstellar material it would be of course very very interesting of course yeah i'm investigating some of the some sorts some similar sources using the nif spectrometer and the yeah. gemini yeah. yeah yeah and somehow somewhat we can uh resolve some of the disks and we we also have very nice uh plots on, on the okay. on the uh, disks so it might be all also interesting for you uh, okay. at yeah. least for the closest sources to take a look at that instrument because it's very powerful and you can also achieve very yes yes yes, yes. I, I know i i have data from nifs uh, and I don't remember uh, toward what source, uh, but yeah, yes, I, I know the instrument, and um, actually uh, we are working uh, uh, with uh, some colleagues in, in, in NIF data, and yes, it's very interesting and it's very powerful uh, instrument, yes, of course. Yeah, so thank you very much. No, thank you. No, I think Maria has a, it's Maria. Okay. okay, thanks a lot for this very didactic presentation also. I don't work on this subject, but I also, of course, I find it really interesting. And I am, I, I guess you can estimate the, uh, the velocity of these molecular outflows. Can you estimate it? Oh, yes, 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 the, the velocity, I don't know if I, I put the velocities here uh, but yes uh, uh, we can estimate yes uh, i i don't remember right now the the precisely the velocity but with the um, with the spectra of the the, the, the emission of the, yes. the 12 co in this case uh and yes wait wait maybe i can maybe no no it's not here but uh, uh, as i i am saying with the uh, spectra with the for, for instance, you have the, the, the Gaussian spectrum when mm -hmm. you have a, 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 a wing in the in the spectra, you can yes. estimate the, the velocity of the outflow. Yes, yes. And this would be like hundreds of kilometers per second? Not, uh, not in this case, yes. There, there are outflows uh, of hundreds of kilometers per second, but in this case, they, they are um, lower values. I, I don't remember exactly, but uh, no, not, lower. not hundreds, but lower, yes. Okay, and another very naive question. You mentioned that the hot cores, molecular cold cores, are more chemically rich. What do you mean by that? Uh, I mean that you can find in the hot cores a lot of molecules. The, the okay. more complex is molecules in the, in the galaxy, uh, you can find in the hot molecular clothes, of course, be, be beside the, the planets and beside uh, here the, the, the yeah. light, of course. Of course. But uh, in the in the space, uh, they are the, uh, the 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 most complex chemistry occurs in these in these regions. Okay, that's very good to know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Great, I didn't know that. Okay. So, I think uh, Juan also has some questions. Thank you, Sergio. Okay, no, no, it's, it's a pleasure. I do, Sergio. Thank you for, for the talk. I don't know if this question is already asked because uh, the system kicked me out, but uh, okay. this is related to the source uh, where you have a conical outflow. And uh, my question is that, uh, I don't know if I understood correctly, uh, you interpret it as a precession uh, effect of the source, right? But uh, my question is, is if uh, it is possible to interpret it in terms of a conical outflow. Uh, conical outflow. Okay. Why the need of a precision? Uh, probably I don't I don't understand. Yes, yes, uh, it's a it's a good question. Uh, let me let me go to the to the slide here. 
here. Uh, yes, it's a it's a good question because or, or, or better the, this one, this one, because when you you look this kind of image, you look this kind of nebula, uh, you see a, a, a coin. So you you can think in 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 an open winds and uh, open uh, open outflows, uh, very open outflows is a possibility. But here you can you can see a, a shed like features, and then you see the um, arc like features that are connected to to the shed. The, these features are the um, they are due are probably due to to the dust and to the the material of this nebula that are excited when the the outflow pass in in the in the cone walls so i think that if you have uh, a, uh, only uh, one outflow that is uh, is open you will not have this kind of uh, arc like features yes uh because of this, uh, probably it's more likely to, ha to have this uh, precession effect. And also yes. you mentioned uh, that this could be triggered or induced by the presence of, uh, comp of a binary. And uh, I, I am not, uh, I don't have like a good sense of what are the scales that can be resolved by in this object, but probably you cannot resolve the presence of the of yeah, the binary. Yeah, right? No, yes, yes, it is here. In this, in, in, I'm sorry, you are. Uh, no, no, just my my last comment is that, uh, for instance, if you interpret it in terms of the presence of a binary, probably in addition to the precession, you could have the effect of the motion of the orbit of the source because yeah. of uh, you know the, this binary motion, and probably well, this could help. Uh, even if you cannot resolve the uh, the source of the presence of the binary, you can analyze uh, probably more carefully the pattern of the outflow if you have these two modes, the precession and the, also the orbit. And then probably you can make some inferences there. I don't know if you have tried this. In this, in this source, uh, uh, we, we need more uh, uh, resolution to resolve. Uh, if this source is one, two, or three, it's possible because you can see here we have uh, 300 astronomical units, and you can have uh, several sources in 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 this uh, in these sizes, and it's a it's a good idea. You what you you are saying? Yes, thank you. Ah, thank you. Okay, I don't know if Betty has uh, one more question. No, just uh, has the, the, raised from the, the previous. Okay, yeah, the previous. So, uh, let's. Uh, I'd like to thank you again, Sergio, for uh, for the talk and for your time, sharing your research and knowledge with us. And uh, yes, uh, I'm. Ah. Thank you, uh, Richard. Let me bring a, a, a question from Edgar Mendonça. Uh, probably you know him personally. Uh, Sergio, so, so it's from the chat in, in YouTube channel. Sergio, about the emission of COMs, uh, general example, CH3O, CH3O, do we have an estimation for the temperature, for instance, in comparison with that of CH3CM? A great talk, thank you. Oh, I don't, uh, I don't understand. The, uh, okay, maybe, maybe the, I can. The, the temperature, the temperature from the uh, from the emission of this of these molecules of the CH three O. Okay, okay, okay I, yeah, I see. I see uh, the question. Okay, about the emission of the comps. Yes, do you have an estimation for the temperature? For instance, in comparison with that. Uh, uh, oh no, no, we 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 couldn't estimate any parameter, any physical parameter from this uh, from this molecule uh, because we we have um, we have only one uh, one of these peaks. Uh, in in this case, you can you can perform a rotational diagram uh, using the the difference emission. These are the the projections of the the transitions. And in particular, in, in this one, we, we couldn't estimate. Uh, okay, yes, it, it's a good question, but uh, 
the, the, the answer is we, we couldn't. Perfect. Thank you, Sergio. Thank you, Edgar. Okay. So, uh, thank you, Sergio. And uh, this is the, the last talk of the seminar of okay. the semester. Oh, no. <laughs> semester. This is, this is semester. Semester. <laughs> to, to and, uh, I'm very happy. Uh, Oh, uh, Jacques has another question. Sorry, uh, Jacques. No, no, it's, uh, it's not. It's oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Just uh, waving. Uh, and I'm, uh, I'm really happy with all the seminars uh, we had this semester. Uh, I'd like to thank you again uh, for all uh, people who contributed, given seminars for serving particular uh, today. And we'd like to thank you uh, to acknowledge all the team. Uh, helping to organize the seminars. Uh, Richard, uh, his hard work for, uh, you know, th th this was an atypical year and to make this work online, it, it required a lot of effort and work from uh, Richard and all the people from the uh, advertising the seminars and especially uh, people participate in the seminars, the audience here in Google Meet and in YouTube. Uh, thank you very much, because, uh, of course, the seminars are uh, for you. And, uh, yes, I, I'm very happy that uh, even with all the situation, people are still taking, uh, are still keeping uh, uh, open to learn with the scientific interests. Uh, it's still keeping their scientific interests and uh, coming to appreciate the work from, from colleagues and to learn uh, all the research from colleagues. And that's it. Uh, uh, I'd like to uh, thank you everyone again. And uh, we see each other in the next year. That's it. Thank you, Sergio. I don't know if Maria wants to complete some. No, I'm fine. Just, yes, thank you to everyone. And thank you, Reinaldo, also. <laughs> That's it. So, Richard, we can uh, finish the transmission.